Minecraft, limited edition. It certainly is a limited edition. How often do you get to see a witch in Minecraft? That's right, we're going to go on a witch hunt today, but we'll do a couple other things as well in terms of using new crafting recipes and experimenting with new physics. I've started getting a little bit of spoilers about 1.4, but at the same time, I'm still doing some experimentation on my own. In any case, let's go ahead and get started with Exploration and Tactics with Brian. Welcome back to post-Halloween Exploration and Tactics with Brian. And I guess I need to start the day off with a confession. I've been going for about a month, never watching anyone's videos who was playing in the snapshot or playing in 1.4. And so now that I've actually made some progress, I finally broke down and watched a couple of videos yesterday uh, in the evening that basically were from the snapshots or 1.4. I watched the first one of Ethos videos that was in the snapshot. And I also watched... Uh, Winther's recent video when she was doing a ultra hardcore match that was the first ultra hardcore match in 1.4 and both of those it turns out gave me some spoilers um, but they were spoilers that people were also mentioning in the comments here as well and so I guess the first one is Etho showed me how to make item frames which is I guess kind of good because I was doing such a horrible job at trying to figure out this recipe even after you guys gave me hints that it was just getting kind of sad. And so basically it's just like a picture, except for instead of putting the wool in the middle, you put the leather in the middle and that gives us an item frame. All right, and so I have a couple of item frames and then I could do it. I don't have a whole lot of room over here, but for example, I've got cobblestone in here. And so I could put an item frame there and then do you like right click? Oh, I put the, you right click with an item. I see, and so if I got some cobblestone on my bar, which of course I'm not carrying any cobblestone, so let's grab a piece of cobble, do 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 do, and then if I right click with the cobble in the item frame, no, that just placed the cobble, do I left click with it, or did I not actually click on the item frame? There we go. All right, so I can have cobble there to say, hey, that's my box with the cobble. Um, and then meanwhile, over here at the bottom bin has coal, for example. I could put an item frame over here and then get a piece of coal on my bar. And right click and put it inside there and then that'll help remind me that the coal is down there. I would need to redo kind of all of the storage in the house anyway, but item frames will make it kind of easier to do. I'm not gonna do that right now on camera. But now I finally know how to make the item frames. So that was one of the things I learned from Etho's video. Then in Winther's video, I thought it was going to be, you know, perfectly innocent. And it was going to be about ultra hardcore. And then at some point, she talks about collecting a whole bunch of iron. And I should have known that it was going to give away a spoiler. Um, but I guess the anvils, like, are affected by gravity or can fall on your head or something. And so if I put an anvil here... <laughs> I like the anvil sound already, but apparently it has like a second sound then when it falls. And should I let it fall on my head or is it going to kill me? Or I'm kind of curious to find out. Um, I don't have any experience to speak of and I'm right next to my spawn point. And so there isn't much danger, I guess. I guess it could damage my armor. Um, but I guess I'm curious to find out what happens if it falls on your head, so let's find out. Oh, that only did like a half a heart of damage? That wasn't so bad. I guess maybe you can make it fall from a higher height. Now I have to experiment. Um, oops. Oh, and then you guys gave me hints about what else I need to do to make the anvil more valuable. We'll try that out in a moment. Um, but let's see, if I put it way up here... Okay, that hit me for two hearts, and so presumably you could make it even fall from higher heights. That's kind of funny because you think of, like, you know, Bugs Bunny cartoons or whatever, uh, the coyote and the roadrunner and anvils always falling on people's heads, and so that's, like, another good use of an anvil, I guess. Um, yeah, I'll have to experiment with, like, pistons and different things. Can you, like, push around the anvil? Can you use it to kill mobs? I don't know. I'll experiment with more of that later. I really like the sound that it makes. Um, and yeah, and then the other thing people were saying is basically you could use 
So these are two items with the same enchantment. But basically people suggested that you could put multiple enchanted items together. So that's efficiency three, unbreaking three. Efficiency four, unbreaking three, with an enchantment cost of 21, and it repairs them together. So apparently that's, that is like the thing to do. And so it was good that I've been holding on to old items. I would need to get up to level 21, but it seems you can repair them and actually make them better. And I think I'd heard, wow, well, was it nighttime already? That you can get efficiency five now. And so maybe you can't get it via enchantments, but maybe you can get it by repairing together other enchanted items or something like that. And so I am going to, I guess it wanted me to get to like level 21. I'm gonna wait to get to like level 21 possibly and then try to enchant two diamond picks, old diamond picks back together. And these shovels are probably just not worth doing anything with. But in any case, that makes a whole lot more sense. I was wondering because previously when I was using the anvil, it seemed like it was costing more levels and more material in order to repair items. But if you can actually make them better as a part of the repair process, then that's actually pretty cool. So I'll definitely do some more experimenting with that. So let's see. Um, those are the first couple of things. I made a list of kind of all the things. People gave some both hints as well as outright spoilers. Gil, I'm looking at you um, over the last few videos, and so I've read, I think, all of them now. And there's a few more things that I need to do, and so let me take a look at that list, and then I'll be back. It is a fresh day. The next thing I want to do is this. Apparently, there is indeed like a witch that can spawn over in the witch hut. It is a long way to the south to the nearest one. And so I have some obsidian to make a nether portal. Uh, and so basically, and I also have a speed potion. And so the idea is I'm going to run over there. I'm going to build a portal. I think it's still close enough uh, to my home village over here that I will end up with the portals linked. And so if I will go back through the portal and if I end up back at home, then I will go ahead and kind of like, I'll take down the coordinates when I'm over there and find the correct way to build another portal that then will connect to it over there. And yeah, and then basically we'll have an easy way to kind of like get back and forth. Still I'm getting these kind of like very slow chunks to load. I haven't tried using the old uh, F3A trick to reload chunks. <laughs> you can see all the villagers over there. Let's try that real quick. If I do F3A, yeah, it still does reload chunks, and that did actually seem to help. Although I'm not sure if I'm just kind of outrunning the terrain loading or regeneration. In any case, long story short, I'm going to use the nether so that I can get my house. Ooh, is this going to be a whole... I'm actually interested to watch this. Whee! Alright, that wasn't as impressive as I thought it might be. But it was still kind of fun. Got a little Kurt J. Max style going on there. Hello, crazy chickens of the swamp. I'm going to connect uh, this place to my house via the nether so I can get back and forth to the swamp hut more easily. And then we are going to hang around at the swamp hut. And I think possibly, I don't know if the witch that apparently can spawn in the swamp hut. I don't know if... Uh, she only spawns at night or will just spawn in darkness. I brought a bunch of blocks so we can try to like cover up the swamp hut and like make it like perpetually dark in there and maybe that'll make it easier to find as well. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, but basically I intend to kind of like stick around until I can actually spawn this new mob and check out uh, what it's like and what's going on. And so I will meet you guys when I'm over there. All right, step one was to find the swamp hut again and I did. And so I'm going to stand right inside of it. Actually, I guess I should figure out where I want to build the nether portal, actually. And then uh, mark down the coordinates there. I hear a bat again. It's got that high-pitched chirp. That apparently they're going to adjust the pitch of, because apparently it gives some people headaches or something. Let's put let's put the nether portal over in the in the water over here. And so whenever I'm coming out of the nether portal, I don't have to worry about monsters kind of like spawning right around me. And so I'm going to build a portal, and I will see you guys in a moment. There's a new flint and steel sound. There's like a click when you use it, which I guess is actually probably what a flint and steel kind of actually sounds like when you're trying to like strike the rock against the 
maybe? I don't know. In any case, before I hop in here, I need to note the coordinates, and so I'm going to write these down. All right, and now let's hop into the portal. And I think I'm still close enough that we'll end up, yes, right back here. Okay, and so we are back at home. And so then, well, I guess I actually need to stay in the nether. All right. Uh, but basically, I want to be facing this way, which is back over towards it, and just dig back to the right coordinates. And so it seems like our both our X and our Z changed, and I did do some zig digging in this direction already. And I'm going to need more obsidian to create another portal. I didn't think about that. So I'm actually going to have to go home and dig up some obsidian. And so I will take a time out to go grab some more obsidian. And then, uh, yeah, basically try to connect up these two nether portals. And so I'll see you guys once I have that all finished. All right. And now we're up to that exciting part of the episode where we get to find out whether or not Brian is good at doing simple division. So let's light this portal and hope that we end up at the Swamp Hut. Hooray! There's the Swamp Hut. It worked, it worked, it worked. Okay, and so that is terrific. Um, let's also just double check and verify that this brings us back to the same portal that we just went into. And so hopefully, yes. Okay, great. So that all worked, and so I have a nice little tunnel that goes uh, back home. And so now, I guess the next thing I want to do is... I guess I do want to see if it's simply darkness that might cause this new mob to spawn. And so I'm going to kind of like build a... We need to uh, reload some chunks here. F3A. There we go. I'm going to build kind of like a dark room around... Uh, this hut and yeah see if possibly we could even get this new witch or whatever to spawn in the daytime but I will take some time to do that all right I will call this operation perpetual darkness but after I close this all up all right now the swamp hut should be in perpetual darkness, and so we might spawn a mob there. And I guess it'll be more likely to spawn a mob there if it's actually daytime. And so I'm going to go ahead and sleep in the bed. But I believe I have built a kind of roughly circular covering in the sky that isn't going to let light uh, in. And so if we work under the assumption, and it is an assumption because I don't actually know, that the witch spawns in darkness, uh, then hopefully I need to make sure I keep my distance as well so that it's actually kind of within spawning range. Uh, we'll get some mobs spawning there. And then the other thing that I can do is I hear like bats and I know there's other cave systems kind of below this area. And so I could also start trying to light up the cave systems that are kind of underneath the swamp under here, which will hopefully make things more likely to spawn over there, I think, maybe. Um, and can I see something in there now, actually? I don't think I actually do, but I saw something green, I thought. So I do just want to go take a look. Oh, I think I'm just seeing the vines kind of from out the other side. But yes, yeah, so let's double check the light level in here right now. Um, where's the light level? Uh, block light is zero. Sunlight is still six or five. Yeah, which is basically, oh, and there is some 7 in here. It might need to be a little bit darker uh, in terms of sunlight. And so I might need to make the roof a little bit bigger to make sure the sunlight from over there doesn't come creeping inside here. Uh, so let me go extend the roof a little bit more. Uh, but then working under the assumptions that the switch will spawn like another mob, another normal mob, hopefully we'll be able to figure it out and actually uh, get this thing to spawn. All right, some more adjustments to the roof, and now even in daylight, the light level is only like one, two, or three over here inside the witch hut. And so that should help a lot, assuming the thing is going to spawn in the darkness. And then the other thing that will help 
will be to start lighting up the caves. Previously, we went down into some of these caves with like a night vision potion. Oh, hello, skeleton. But I don't know that I lit up much any of it. Uh, and so now we're going to come back and actually start lighting some of it up. Uh, working under the assumption that there's a bat. Hello, crazy squeaky bat. Working under the assumption uh, that the witch may spawn against the mob cap, which may or may not actually be true. Uh, it probably actually isn't true now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, I would guess if it's that rare of a mob that it might have its own kind of spawning characteristics and might not work against the mob cap. I'm not really sure. But in any case, it'll also just kind of help kill some time to light up some of these caves. And so I'm going to spend a little bit of time doing this, and then we'll go back up on the surface, either at daytime or nighttime, whenever we're there, and see if we can actually manage to find the witch. And so, oops, I will see you guys when I see you. Assuming I manage to stay alive. It is definitely a new experience, doing some caving. So admittedly, this skeleton's AI is a little bit tweaked, because he's not looking at me and he keeps firing arrows and is missing me. But he was way down here and he just caught a glimpse of me and he started running up and firing arrows at me. Uh, whereas previously, uh, before 1.4, they would not see you if they were on you know, a much different Y level than you. And so that's definitely making the caving a bit more challenging already. Uh, and I'm just kind of caving because I'm in the mood for it. I don't know that I necessarily need to light up a whole lot underneath here. I expect if I just stay up on the surface for a while, I might finally see the witch, maybe, hopefully. Um, but I was just in the mood to do a little bit of caving, and so I'm doing a little bit of this. Uh, but I don't know any of it will be too interesting, and so I'll probably edit most of it out. Um, but just an update on what I'm doing. I find that I'm very affected by the sounds. And even though I... And gotten to the point to where I can recognize most of the sounds that I'm hearing. Hello, skeleton. It's still the case. I, uh, bow and arrow. Arrows bouncing off the bad guys for no good reason. That still frustrates me. Um, yeah, even though I kind of like know the new sounds and so like I can identify what it is that I'm hearing, uh, nevertheless, the fact that the sounds are new and different and distinct. I guess I'm not as used to them, and so it definitely, I feel more scared as I'm going through the cave system, which is funny because, I mean, I've hardly taken any damage and I haven't actually encountered all that many mobs, um, but it's just a matter of kind of like the psychology of it or whatever, like hearing the different sounds that I'm still not, oops, ouch, well that's one way that I could die, I could fall in some lava or do something like that, I have a water bucket on my bar. Um, but yes, definitely, I and I continue to like the new lava sound. I think I say that every time I just heard it. Um, but yes, definitely, you know, even the sound of my own footsteps when all of a sudden I transition and I'm walking on gravel for a minute. I know what it is. Like, my brain, you know, is able to decipher what is going on. Uh, but at the same time, my heart kind of, you know, takes a leap in my throat when I'm like, wait a minute, you know, what is that? It's just kind of my initial reaction to the still somewhat unfamiliar sounds. I have one ladder that I don't know is really doing me a whole lot of good, so why don't I get rid of that so I can hold some more objects. At this point, I've probably lit up enough of the cave system that we should probably head back upstairs, and I should hang out and see if I can actually get that thing to spawn, and so I'm going to find a way back up, and I will see you guys back on the surface. Alright, well I found my way out to the surface. There's some slimes around, and so I'm worried that they're going to crush me to death as I try to swim back up here. Let's see, where am I? Ah, there's whatever I'm looking for. And I don't know where the slime is that I hear, and there's a zombie over there. But let's head back over this way. There's another big slime over here. And see if we might happen to get lucky enough. So many slimes. Might happen to get lucky enough to encounter this new mob. Gosh, you guys are so loud, and I know I'm going to have, like, no chance of hitting you with a sword. Because that would just be too fair. And so, I will kill you with bows and arrows until I can trim you down to size. And then you guys, I can probably, like, finish off with a shovel! That's right. It's the shovel of death. Look out, slimes. 
That is pretty satisfying. <laughs> to kill all the little baby slimes. Alright, um... So, if I hang out over here, I should be kind of like within the spawning range of that thing. I did just mine up a bit of iron and coal. And so I think I'm actually going to set down a furnace and like cook up some of that while I try to just kind of hang out. And yeah, see if we happen to get lucky enough to actually spawn a crazy witch or something over here. So I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so I'm far enough away that mobs should be able to spawn in there if they're going to. I've got the furnace going. And I can also take a time out to go, item repair, do 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 hooray, better iron sword. And yeah, I might do a little bit more kind of like housekeeping and make a little bit kind of a better house area over here. Uh, and just kind of hang out on the surface and see if I see anybody over there. And yeah, I'll bring you guys back in if something interesting happens. All right, I've been walking around the outside edge of the swamp collecting lily pads. Um, but now let's just take a run over back by the witch hut. I've been within the range that it could spawn mobs. And indeed, just in the darkness, kind of like underneath the hut, we might find like a spider or a skeleton or something else underneath here as well. I hear a sheep. Here's a spider. Speak of the devil. Oh, look at that. But other than the fires burning up on top, still doesn't seem like we've gotten a mob to spawn inside of here. And so I'll continue just kind of walking around, collecting lily pads, getting to know the area. Because I intend to stick it out for the long haul. And I will start uh, leaving it at night in case it is actual nighttime that needs uh, to be happening in order for this thing to spawn. And yeah, see you guys in a bit. It occurs to me that if I'm going to be spending time here kind of watching the hut I should probably try to put some light kind of way over behind the hut so that I can actually see past it uh, because right now it's hard for me to see like even if something did spawn in there hopefully it would be something that would I don't know run out and try to come kill me or something so that I would notice it but just in case it's not I'm gonna add some more light kind of around the area but still far enough away that I won't be interfering with the light level of anything potentially spawning over there. And I did light up a little bit more caves. I'm going to go ahead and also start getting rid of the sheep uh, in this area, just because they're just kind of a noisy nuisance. I keep hearing the footsteps, and uh, it's distracting me possibil possibly from the possibility of creepers creeping up on me and stuff like that. And really, who needs all these white sheep? And so we'll get rid of some of them. And just kind of add, not a ton of light, but a little bit of light around here. Let's not look at the Endermen. There have really not been that many mobs spawning on the surface over here yet. Hello, spider. And so I guess that's just a result of... Oops, I'm up to level 10. Awesome. A result of... Uh, well, now I see more mobs. Maybe it just hadn't... I hadn't given enough time after uh, nightfall. And so I'm far enough back over here. There's a creeper over here, and so I need to be careful. Hello, creeper. For some reason, I saw a... Uh, well, now he's turning towards me a little bit better. I've seen a couple of these mobs kind of like walking sideways. Oh, you saw me too. Kind of walking sideways and looking at you sideways or something, which seems a little weird. I almost looked at the Enderman over there. Continue to be careful about that. Gathering up lily pads just because they're a useful block. I could use it to kind of like create paths over the water, which will make it easier to navigate around here. And let's see, I'm far enough still away that I can add torchlight over here and it shouldn't interfere with any of the spawning kind of like over at the witch hut proper. And yeah, I can see my portal. I can kind of like see where the witch hut is, even though I can't really see the... I keep calling it a witch hut because I do think it's going to be a witch. I guess I should call it the swamp hut until I actually see a witch. Because for right now, it's just a uh, hut in the swamp. That's all I really know about it or can say about it. Um, Hello, skeleton, who's going to see me at some point and start firing arrows at me, and so why don't I beat you to the punch? Hello, spider, who will be slowed down in the water, and so I'll probably actually be able to kill you and hit you before you can hit me. Hooray! 
And I guess I'll kind of circle back around. And then... Ooh, there's some pumpkins over there. How day after Halloween still somewhat appropriate. I am so good at the talking thing. That's why I do this. <laughs> oh, dear. All right, there's a bunch of mobs over here. Let's make sure I kind of stay away from them and stay alive. But at the same time, get close enough that I can kind of peer into... Oh, crap, crap! Yikes. All right, hooray for listening to my ears and blocking. Um, if something does happen in, in this swamp hut, I want to be able to see it. But unfortunately, I don't know what I'm looking for. Just keep your eyes peeled for signs of unusual activity, Brian. I'm trying, but the big slimes are making it a big pain in the neck. Um, I see a creeper. I see a skeleton. Do I see anybody else? I see a zombie over there. But I don't see any obvious activity inside the house or anything new. Yeah, all right. I'm going to make another cut. Who knows how long I'll have to wait or walk around. Swamps are just teeming with slimes. Uh, but we're near the end of nightfall and coming up on the end of, or <laughs> the end of nightfall. I don't even know what that means. We're coming up on daybreak, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And so based on my new mental model of how slime spawn, I think on the surface, or maybe still like above level 40 or something, they still need to spawn in darkness because in the daytime I haven't seen the slimes. And so presumably that's going to help in terms of getting rid of the slime spawns. And then there's definitely, like, I see some skeletons and different things over there. But I still haven't seen anything new through the whole night. And so we'll walk over here and investigate. But then I guess I'll continue to hang out during the day while it'll be dark just under here. Yeah, I'm really not sure what to do. Because I really want to see this thing. Don't you want to see it, Mr. Skeleton? But yeah, no signs of any other activity in here. Hmm. Hmm. All right, I see some mobs have spawned on top of the swamp hut, but it looks like it's just a skeleton, a creeper, a slime, and another creeper who fell off. Haha, <laughs> and the <laughs> the slime is like committing suicide, but I still don't see anybody on the inside or anybody new. Hello, little squid. So I'm still kind of keeping my eyes peeled, but at the same time, I'm doing some other investigation around the area. All right, the moon's setting again. It's another kind of full day-night cycle that I'm going to go through without having ever found what I'm looking for. Well, I need to make sure that I can see, because I see a couple of skeletons, I see a spider, I see a couple of spiders. But I don't see the one that I'm looking for. Assuming, of course, that I even know what I'm looking for. Who knows anymore? Let's just go and double check over here. <laughs> Let's add some light. <laughs> Alright, we got a bunch of spiders. Got a skeleton, got another skeleton. But yeah, no one else out of the ordinary. Boo! I want to see something new. I spent much time in construction materials over here. And for what? For nothing! And that makes me want to kill skeletons. Ooh, right in the chest. Um, well, poop. Here's another spider. It's gonna turn daytime again. I took out the flower pot. Like, it doesn't need, like, the flower pot or anything to spawn, does it? I wouldn't imagine so. I'm just going to take another quick peek inside. I presume it's just kind of like a spawning location in here. Uh, yep. Don't know, don't know, don't know. I think I've got it. I cut down some trees off camera, and then I was just walking back, and I turned around, and yes! There is something new over there, 
And I think I can afford to waste... I have a night vision potion, don't I? Yeah. Let's just, while it's walking around over there, let's just drink this to get a better look at what we're looking at before I get close enough. <laughs> it's kind of like a villager wearing a witch hat and a robe. All right, so that's pretty cool. And I presume it's going to attack me somehow, and I don't know how. Has it seen me yet? Nope. Whoa. whoa. Oh, it just threw a potion on me. Do I have, like, weakness or something? Slowness. Does it have other potions that it can throw? All right, it seems to be immune to the sun. And it Oh, my gosh, poison. Yuck. That's actually a bad one. Um, <laughs> I wonder if it can do, like, just, like, all of the bad potions against me or something. I've got it out into the sunlight, and so now this night vision potion is kind of useless. Okay, potion. That was another poison potion. Um... And then I presume I want to kill it, because that's what you do in this game. You kill all the guys who are trying to kill you. Uh, but I'm still kind of curious. Gosh, this poison is lasting forever. This is going to kill me if I'm not careful. Fortunately, my spawn point is, like, right over there. Um, and I still have slowness, so I probably won't be able to outrun him either. Um, crap. All right. And we got slimes to deal with over here. I guess I will try... To kill this thing. This witch. It's already taken three normal arrows, four normal arrows, five normal arrows. Wow, it's a pretty. Unless, like, it has regen on it or something. Alright, there we go. And now let's go see. There is some drop. It looks like it might be sugar. Sugar. Yes, as well as some experience. Okay. Um, I wonder if you get just, like, different potion ingredients each time you kill one? In any case, that's a reasonably difficult mob to have to fight. I still have my night vision potion, and so I can see the mobs who have spawned uh, underneath the witch hut again. And now, it's definitely easier for me to see, even if I don't have the night vision. I have taken out... There used to be a bunch of trees around here, and so I've taken out kind of like all of the nearby trees, which makes it easier to just kind of see through this whole area. But also it's the case that it's basically, it's kind of like right around here, if I'm standing around this distance, uh, it's kind of like the right amount of distance to stand for mobs to be spawning kind of inside the hut. And so now I think I have a better sense of what I want to do if I want to try to get lucky and get get this thing to spawn inside here again but that was that was interesting that was uh kind of a fun battle i would be interested to do it melee i think i lost track of the arrow count it took like six or seven arrows oh there's another one wow all right so i know just where to stand i'm gonna go ahead and just to count the arrows to get a sense of how many hit points this guy has four five six Okay, so six normal arrows, and this time he dropped some glowstone dust, I think. And a spider eye, I think. Okay, so that's cool. So it seems like it will just spawn at the, at the swamp hut. And so I think all the work that I did in order to keep it dark and whatever in the, in the daytime, because it was definitely during the daytime when it first spawned the first time, uh, I definitely think that actually turned out to be useful work to do, because I think now I'm actually going to be able to get it to spawn a number of times pretty easily. Well, at least based on the two data points that I have so far. Of course, now that it's turning nighttime, we'll probably get a whole bunch of other mobs spawning all around here. All right, that's very exciting. I was really just about to give up, and then I was like, you know what, why don't I take out the trees so that I can see around this area a little bit better? And it was just as I had taken out the final tree, and I was walking back, and I turned back around, and I saw him. Uh, or saw her, I guess. I don't know. There isn't a whole lot to identify the sex or the gender of these different villages, villagers, witch villagers. I wonder there's a way that you can, like, uninfect the zombie villagers. I wonder if I could throw, like, if I threw a weakness potion and whatever other... I don't know if it's like a golden apple. People were trying to give me hints about how you could turn the... Uh, zombie villagers like back into normal villagers and like heal them up or whatever 
um, but I still haven't experimented with that. But in any case, that is super cool. Um, I'm glad we managed to spawn a couple of these guys finally. And yeah, at this point, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've already got like a half an hour of footage from today or something just to get that final last couple of minutes. Um, but I'm excited about that. I still have this night vision potion for another three minutes. And so I'll probably make a cut, but I'm going to walk back and forth. And if we manage to spawn another one, um, I'll bring you guys back in. All right, well, my night vision just ran out, and so it didn't it didn't do its little uh, blinky blinky thing that time. I just noticed that. Like, usually your light kind of like flashes on and off before the night vision goes away, and I don't think it did that this time, which is a little weird. Um, it's not a spider jockey. I thought I saw a spider jockey over there. All right, in any case, that's a good place to end this episode. We got to see a couple of witches. I'm very happy about that. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video, and I will see you again soon. I hope you guys are having a great day. Happy day after Halloween.